May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may have heard that I've been under a little bit of stress the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I'm not, that's not unique, I don't think. I think most of us in our lives have stress. Anybody here not have any stress in their lives at any given point? What I have found helpful, and this has been true not only the last couple of weeks, but in general, that when life is just seeming to overwhelm me, I find taking a walk to be an amazing way of rebooting and letting some of it go. And if you live here in Metuchen, you know that this is a great town to do such a thing in. And if you're blessed with a wonder dog, it gets even better. <laughs> Because dogs need, they like walks, and they don't talk to you while you're on the walk, so that you can process whatever it is you need to be processing. And so it's not surprising to me that these two folks, Cleopas and an unnamed person, are taking a walk. I can only imagine how much stress the merry band of disciples were feeling at that point. And those two probably said, we got to get away from this group. They're too anxious, they're too much fear, and we'll just walk to a different town, get a, have a chance to process what's going on amongst the two of us, because Peter and that crowd are just out of control, and you can't take it anymore. Anybody ever been to a place where you just said, I can't take it anymore? I'm going to lay down whatever it is I'm doing right now, and I'm just going to take a little stroll. I'll come back. But right now, I need to take a walk. So there are Cleopas and the unnamed disciple taking a walk, and somebody joins them on the walk. Now this too has happened, that when you're on your walk, you may run into somebody you know. They start talking to you, maybe they just say hello or good morning. Or if you're traveling and somebody just needs to strike up a conversation. And of course, the Bible tells us that the two did not recognize the gentleman that had joined them in their walk. I didn't Google search this, but I have a feeling somewhere there's a medieval painting of the road to Emmaus. And I picture Jesus having like a cloak over his head, some way that they really could, but I could be wrong about that. But for whatever reason, their mind's too stressed out, too much stuff going on to be able to recognize who it is that's walking with them. And I love Jesus. I said, what are you talking about? What's, what's going on? What's stressing you out that much that the two of you are having such an animated but very personal conversation? And they asked a question that I think is so apropos even today. Do you not know what's going on? How many of you have encountered people that are so maybe involved too much in 24-7 news? And like, don't you know what's going on in the world? There is so much stuff going on. And I'm just so overwhelmed by it. And there's nothing I can do about it. And you're like, okay, what news exactly is it today that's got you this torn? Why is it that you're that distracted that you needed to take a walk? And then, of course, they have to go, well, we're surprised, sir, that you do not know and have no idea what's going on. But we have this faith in this man, Jesus. We thought the story was supposed to go this direction, and it went a totally different one. And now we don't know what to do. We don't know where we're supposed to be. This is an amazing disappointment on so many levels. And the people we usually hang out with have come unglued as well. And then he gives them a Bible study while walking chance to say, hey, you know, there may be another way to look at this story than the way you thought. And he goes right from all the way through the Torah, through all of the Isaiah passages, everything you could think of. And they, they started to get it, but they haven't got it quite yet. Have you ever had somebody say something like, and it's somewhat clicking, but not totally. And you're going, I think there's something important here. But it's stirring within me, and yet I'm still not getting the point. Well, that was where they were. 
Of course, evenings rolled around, roads were a little dangerous. Hey, why don't you come with us and have some dinner, crack open a beer, whatever it is we're gonna do, and let's keep this conversation going. Because there's something in it that's stirring us, but we don't know what it is yet. And then of course, Jesus breaks the bread, blesses it, gives it to him, and the light bulb goes on. Aha, the very thing we've been looking for, the very person we had hoped to see has shown up. And then he disappears. And yet at that point, they said, were not our hearts burned? Was there not something that started to clear the fog and the stress away from us that we began to see more clearly what God needed us to understand and what direction we're supposed to take? Again, circling back to that wall, it's in those times when if, even if I'm walking with somebody, but I find clear in my head, I can see and hear what Jesus wants me and needs me to hear when I've let go of a lot of other stuff. And Lord knows in our lives there is enough other stuff that can block our ability to see Christ in that moment, to hear what Christ is saying, and then to be able to get into a different place, to be able to deal with the things that we truly need to deal with, but to let go of the things that are just garbage in our lives and taking up too much intellectual and emotional space. And only Christ can clear that space for us when we're willing to take that walk. We talk about a faith journey, don't we? A walk with Christ. All of us need to do that from time to time, if not daily. Whether that's in the morning, in the middle of your work day, when you said, I've had enough of this, turn your phone off and take that walk. And in those times, I think you might be surprised how it's in those moments that Jesus appears, talks to you, walks side by side with you, but encourages you to let some stuff go and to be able to focus on the things God really needs to focus in on. I wish it would be that there would never be any stress anymore in life. That's not real. But what I have found is that when I acknowledge that Christ is walking with me, and Christ is truly opening up the scriptures in new ways to me, which is another good reason to read your Bible every day, because you might find something that at that moment is exactly what you needed to hear. And I have found that to be amazingly true each and every day even when it's an amazingly familiar passage. Because our journeys are always at a different place each day. The stresses and things that are causing us to be anxious are different. But the thing that's true all the time has been Christ's presence in both word and sacrament, nourishing us, feeding us, and encouraging us to continue to walk with him day by day. Amen. Amen.